give them a heads up, call ahead of time, tell them I want to talk to them? Should I meet with them face to face? Should I send them an email? Is a text message okay? Do I need to have a witness there? Do I need to meet with them in a public place? Do I need to have this in writing? Assess your communication options. What's the best way, the most effective way, to communicate these feelings to that other person? And sometimes, and we just mentioned this too, assessing your communication options means the best thing is not to communicate the feelings. Uh, I'm gonna, just going to keep that to myself. And that happens quite a bit. That the best thing in the world that's inappropriate, uh, that's not going to be helpful for me to communicate this to anyone, all that's going to do is hurt their feelings, all that's going to do is get me in trouble. Probably best if I just keep that to myself. Sometimes that's the case. In assessing our communication options, the best thing is not to communicate those emotions feelings to keep them to ourselves some people can't do that I mean we say things like they wear their emotions on their sleeve uh, you know exactly how they're feeling boy they get mad at you and you know it yeah some some people just have a very difficult time keeping that in but sometimes that's the most effective thing to do so that's what that means when somebody says uh, they wear their heart on their sleeve yes Yep. It, it, you know exactly what they're feeling. They they look on their face. Yeah, you can tell what they're feeling. That's what exactly what both of those terms mean. Yeah. I never understood that. Yep, that means that you you know exactly what they're feeling. Um, they can't help but express their feelings. Now it can cause real problems too. We have anger management classes because of people that aren't able to to control their feelings and emotions. Um, Boehner, what's his first name? Speaker of the House, I lost his name. Uh, Boehner. Um, if you remember a couple of years ago, it's probably been see how long, see, four years ago, he had a terrible time crying all the time. Do you remember this? It made the news. He'd give a speech and he'd just start crying. Or he'd give an interview and he'd just start crying. Uh, and they, I mean, he had to work with coaches and go through counseling and all kinds of things because that's how, when his adrenaline got going, when he felt passionate about something, whether he was excited, this is really positive, this is really great, or it was something serious, he would cry. And it really hurt him um, with his, when he was uh, campaigning when he was running for office because, you know, they call him all kinds of names and everything and ridiculous stuff, but that was emo his emotional behavior. He couldn't control it. Uh, he wore his emotions on his sleeve and took a lot of heat for doing that. Assess your communication options. That's number six in the six guidelines for expressing emotions. We're just about done. In fact, I think I'll just do this and then we'll go over the study guide. Um, your book, right at the end, talks about communication apprehension. <clears throat> Remember the cowboy syndrome? We talked about the cowboy syndrome when we were talking about self-disclosure. That's what we're talking about with communication apprehension. Communication apprehension is a nervousness or an anxiety when it comes to communicating. That's no? me. I'm sorry? That's me. <laughs> yeah. Um, we talked about it, a specific type, a type of communication apprehension, when we talked about the cowboy syndrome. Remember that? A hesitancy to self-disclose, a fear of weakness got that in your notes that'll definitely be on the final and I think I put it on this test too so make sure you have the definition of cowboy syndrome in there. I'm sorry cowboy syndrome was in chapter 3 chapter 3 it is a hesitancy to self disclose out of fear of showing weakness. 
You've got this in your chapter three notes. Both men and women experience the cowboy syndrome. Your book talked about primarily men, but both men and women experience the cowboy syndrome. It's a hesitancy, it's a nervousness or apprehension about self-disclosing. Apprehension just means nervousness or anxiety. Cowboy syndrome is an apprehension when it comes to self-disclosing. Communication apprehension means a nervousness or anxiety when it comes to communication. And there's two types of communication apprehension that you really need to know. There's state apprehension and trait apprehension. Don't get these confused on the test. Communication apprehension is a nervousness or an anxiety when it comes to communicating. Sir, would that be like, uh, huh? you watch Big Bang Theory? Mm -hmm. um, Raj, and his communication with women. With women, yeah, yeah. Um, that would, well, I'll use that as an example here in a minute. Communication apprehension is a nervousness or an anxiety when it comes to communicating. State apprehension is when you're fine most of the time. You're pretty good in most situations. Pretty comfortable communicating most of the time. But specific situations make you very, very nervous. You get nervous in very specific situations. Raj, on the Big Bang Theory, he's kind of gotten over it now, but in the first few seasons, Raj could not talk to women at all. He would go mute, would not be able to communicate, would not be able to talk to women at all. That would be state apprehension. He was fine in other contexts, in other situations, but put a woman in front of him and he couldn't speak. Remember Cheers with Cliff Clavin? Cliff Clavin experienced the same thing. He'd get all tongue-tied and everything when he tried to talk to a beautiful woman. That is state apprehension. When you're fine most of the time, but a specific situation makes you really, really nervous. What's the most common example of state apprehension? Public speaking. Almost everybody experiences state apprehension when it comes to public speaking. Almost everybody at some level will experience state apprehension when it comes to public speaking. Some people are fine, don't have any problem with it. Some people experience state apprehension if they're being recorded and they get all nervous. I, I run into that all the time at the radio station. We'll be out doing a broadcast and I'll be talking to one of the car dealers or something and I'll say, okay, we're going to come to you and you talk about the new uh, Dodge or whatever it is and make sure you hit this, this, and this. And the guy will say, okay, I'm ready, I'm ready. And I'll say, and we got in front of us a pretty new car. What is this? And he'll go, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> they, they get the microphone in front of them and they just freeze up. <laughs> or a camera and they'll freeze up. They get so nervous they don't know what to do. That would be state apprehension. Were you ever nervous? Like when you first all the started? time. All the time. Absolutely, all the time. Are you still nervous sometimes? Yeah, and I and I and a student from Moorhead visited the other day in the broadcasting program at Moorhead, and he asked me that question. I said, "When I'm done being nervous, I'll quit because that's what's kind of fun about it." Uh, yeah, I, yeah, it gets the adrenaline going and everything, but. You know, preparing for it and knowing, like football games, I get so mad at people because before a football game starts, I put my headsets on, I go through my rosters, get them in, and I mean, I'm bouncing, I'm pumping, I'm, I'm, I've got to get in the zone, and I'm a nervous wreck. Quit asking me questions. Leave me alone. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm a nervous wreck. But as soon as the game starts, the numb. Joe, nice guy, and talking to him and everything. But yeah, I get very, very nervous with it. I get very nervous. I'm getting nervous just talking about it. I'm <laughs> um, so state apprehension is very specific. Trade apprehension is general nervousness. You're an introvert. You're shy. You don't like communicating at all. You get nervous in any communication situation. Put me in a cubicle by myself, let me work on the computer, let me in my office, let me just do my thing. If I could avoid people all day, I'd be very, very happy. 
that is trait apprehension. Get nervous and uncomfortable in any communication situation. Uh, state apprehension is very specific. When a specific context makes you nervous, communication context makes you nervous, trait apprehension is a general nervousness regarding communicating. You are an introvert. You are just a shy person. You are not a real people person. Rather work by yourself, rather work alone. That would be trait apprehension. Do you want to take a break before we go over the study guide or you want to just get it done? We're done once we go over the study guide. Get it done. Get it done?